Uh, Brad Fitzpatrick is on the GO team. If you didn't know that, he's one of, he's been on it for a number of years. Um, well, I'll give you three interesting facts about Brad. One comes from his wife. His first one is that Brad has a wife. <laughs> <laughs> who's here with us in the audience today. And What's he up, proposed wife? to her at, uh, at the dot .go conference. Not at the conference. Well, he was in Paris for the dot .go conference. <laughs> Uh, uh, no, that one's not good. We'll give you two today. And, and that was from Brad and then from Kate. Her interesting fact is that Brad got involved with the GO team because he complained about a lot of things. And they said, fine, you fix it. <laughs> All right, yeah. So uh, I thought this was going to be an hour talk. Um, and then I found out it was like 20 or 25 minutes. So I turned it into lightning talks. And um, I also like testing, so I'm going to test it on you guys. Um, I haven't done this before. So I'm going to talk, I, one of my things I do on the Go team is kind of keep the Go open source project kind of alive, a lot of the build system sort of things and, you know, interacting with the community. Um, so this is kind of like a what would you say you do here talk. And this is um, kind of a talk about tools and processes and version control systems and code review and uh, CI systems. Um, so a lot of people would just say, why don't you just use GitHub or why don't you just use GitHub and Travis, um, which would probably be an acceptable answer if we were starting out today. Um, but as history, Go is actually on its fourth version control system now. It started in Subversion and moved to Perforce inside Google when it was open sourced. It switched to using uh, code uh, or code review .google or code .google .com, whatever, the thing that shut down. And um, we migrated to GitHub uh, at the beginning of 2015. And so I was involved with the conversion to GitHub and to Git. Um, we've also changed code review systems a few times. So again, should we just use GitHub? And we kind of do. Um, we do use the GitHub issues. This slide looks like GitHub has issues, which is also true. But we use, we use GitHub's issue tracker. So if a user comes into Go and wants to you know, find, report a bug or report that we don't have something, they go and say, you know, Go needs blah, blah, blah. And um, we use labels on GitHub. And um, we have little short links. So if you go golang.org issue or issue slash new or some number, we redirect because we, after you know, switching four systems or switching to our fourth system, we're kind of apprehensive that we might have to switch a fifth time. So we're trying to use these like cutesy URLs that hopefully will be more stable and we could just change the redirect. But it probably won't happen. Um, we also use the milestone feature on GitHub. Uh, we didn't for a while. So I'll talk about this a little bit more. Um, actually, I'll talk about the next slide. So we, instead of just saying go 1.9, this will be in 1.8 or 1.9, um, we actually say which part of the release cycle um, or the likelihood that we're going to get it in or if we're going to get it in early. So the release cycle is six months long. The first three months of the release cycle um, is like active development, trying to fix as many bugs, add as many features as possible. We kind of have a plan about what we're going to do every cycle to some degree, at least the, the major items. And then the last half of the cycle, which we're in now for go 1.8, is the freeze. And then we release the next one, and we just do this over and over again. Um, so that's a little aside about the release process. As far as discussion, like how the Go community talks amongst ourselves, it seems to be the case nowadays uh, on GitHub that your kind of forum is just the issue tracker. So a lot of people, we were totally shocked when we switched to GitHub that people started filing bugs like, hey, everyone, nice to meet you. I live in Gopherville, and I wonder if anyone has Go meetups here. And we, to us, we were like, this isn't a bug. What are people doing? And it was just, um, it was, yeah, it was just surprising because we didn't realize that the, you know, the GitHub culture wasn't really used to mailing lists. And I guess we're old or something. We use mailing lists. So I, I replied to lots of these things and say, you know, for questions about Go, see blah, blah, blah questions, which was the nicest thing um, we can find as a template. And that goes to the, our little shorts URL for her wiki questions, which go, redirects to the GitHub wiki, which you know, says, Hey, unlike a lot of projects on GitHub, we don't use the issue tracker for general discussion. Please, you know, go to Slack or go to IRC or go to Golang Nuts. Um, so that generally works. So for discussion, yeah, we do use uh, Google Groups um, for kind of like the general chat about whatever you want. Um, it has some features. It also is kind of weird. Um, it has moderation. You can see this little. Um, no, you can't see anything with the mouse cursor. Um, there's like moderation, and you know people are talking about .NET Core versus Go yesterday, I guess. Um, there's also Golang Dev, which is kind of just the developers talking about patches to Go, and there's Golang uh, Announce, which is very low traffic. That just says you know there's a new version of Go out. Um, in terms of changing code, um, 
just terminology wise, we often use the term CLs, which is like a perforcism, I guess, about change lists. Same thing as a PR or a diff or a patch, it's all the same. Um, so people send us pull requests on GitHub and they say, hey, we're updating a link in your docs, it'll drive by contribution. And then we have this tool called um, come to pushback that auto closes the pull request and says thanks, so we don't use pull requests. And this is a little unfortunate, um, but um, we give them a link to doc contribute. We, we do want to kind of enable this in the future, but it's uh, difficult. Sorry, <laughs> uh, and the little uh, link we send people to doc contribute goes to this wall of text. You can see the, um, see those, the little pull down slider thingy on the right on the scroll bar, see how tiny it is? This is because this page is just like a mile long of text that explains like how to use Git. And not how to use Git, how to use our little wrapper on top of a Git that makes Git feel like perforce or something. So a lot of people come to this and they're really confused, but it really boils down to two steps, and which is sign Google CLA to make lawyers happy that says like, I retain the copyright to this, but I'm giving you permission to use it and I promise I won't sue you for doing the thing I told you you could do already, basically. Um, it's very readable, but people don't like signing it. Um, but whatever, necessary evil. The next step uh, to send a code review is you just push whatever is in your, uh, your Git tree to uh, refs for master, which is a magic thing on our Git server that craps out something to like, you know, get standard error and tells you, here's your review, go do your code review there. Um, we have a tool to make this easier called Git code review that you can go get. And then instead of having to type, you know, this all the time, you want to like, you're iterating on your code review, changing something, reacting to feedback from uh, the reviewers, and then like sending it again, you can type this instead. So whatever, it makes it a little bit easier. Um, it does other things too, but like that's basically what it does. There's also uh, this other app we call uh, DevApp, which is a, a website that gives us kind of a lot of various dashboards about what's outstanding, code, uh, code reviews that are outstanding, bugs that are outstanding, proposals that are outstanding. Um, so we go there occasionally, um, like daily, constantly, and just reloading it and clicking things and doing code reviews. That takes us to Garrett. Garrett is our code review system. Um, it shows, you know, diffs of things and also keeps tracks of versions of patches and, you know, every, every iteration and you can see what changed from patch set version 3 to patch set 7 or, you know, what was the last comments between this person doing, you know. it's it's. Way better than GitHub. If you've only used GitHub for code review, you're missing out a lot. A lot of people also say Garrett is um, impossible to use and slow, and uh, there's actually a team working on it. You can see this one says Poly Garrett at the top. This is the new version of the Garrett UI, which is much less painful. So hopefully um, people's opinions about Garrett will change as they try out the new UI. But anyway, you leave comments on stuff, and then you leave uh, batches of feedback, and you say, okay, j okay, Francis, just change two things and um, there's an overview page about all the things that are outstanding. Um, we also have this, uh, you can have arbitrary labels that you can vote on, and we made one label called run tribot, and it's zero or one, basically a checkbox. And you say that, and then we have these tribots that go and test things. So I wanna talk about um, kind of our testing and build system. We have this page build.golang.org, which is this matrix of all the configurations that we test and all the commits. Um, can't really read that at all, but we have like Darwin, uh, various versions of OS X, FreeBSD, tons of configurations and processor architectures of Linux. You can see like ARM and ARM64 and MIPS and MIPS64 and PowerPC64 and S390X. And there's various versions of Debian in there and Cgo and not Cgo and optimized builds and unoptimized builds. Um, uh, you know, 386 with 387 mode. Then you see all the other Windows configurations, uh, OpenBSD, NetBSD, Dragonfly, Plan 9, Solaris. So when a lot of people say, why don't you just use Travis or something, yeah. why don't we just use Travis? Because it doesn't do a lot of these things. It doesn't run on a lot of these architectures or um, uh, we also shard our test results out so we can get all of our tests done in five minutes even though the whole test suite might take an hour or something. We could cross compile it on one machine and then shard out the test to a bunch of other things. And I mean, we had this kind of in development for quite a while, so now Travis is you know, getting better and doing more things, but we already have this, and it's written in Go, and it's easy to understand, at least for us. So the tribots are our pre-submit testing. This one is our post-submit kind of view of the world. So the tribots, we click this little checkbox, we say, please run it. It goes off, there's this process called the coordinator, which kind of looks at everything. The coordinator has this really gross UI that kind of like says what's going, all the machines that are connected to it. 
And um, the Tribot will like pick up your job and say, okay, I'm running, here's your status page for your run, and then five minutes later it'll tell you like whether it was good or not. Um, there's this program called the Buildlet, which is a, just a Go binary, it's just a, a web server. It's the least secure server in the world. It has HTTP handlers to write any arbitrary file to any path on disk, <laughs> to read any arbitrary file on disk, and to execute any arbitrary thing on disk and stream the result. So, we only run it behind machines that are firewalled. And, um, <laughs> but the overall build system kind of looks like there's you know, Garrett's and GitHub and build.golang.org keeping track of like, the state of what needs to be tested. Um, and it's also you know, syncing things between Garrett and GitHub. And then we're, creating, we're either creating new Kubernetes containers for Linux, these sorts of things, things that run the Linux, or we're creating VMs or like Windows or BSDs. Uh, in some cases for Macs, we use VMware to run Macs on Macs because you can only virtualize Macs on Macs legally. So we have a bunch of Mac hosts and we could create a new Mac VM whenever we need. Um, Scaleway, we have 50 ARM machines on uh, Scaleway in Paris. So we just, and then we have like tons of people that are donating machines. So, so we have like five PowerPC machines, a five ARM and ARM64 machines, and IBM's donating some S390X machines. So we have like some static machines that are just sitting there idle waiting for work. And then we have a bunch of ones like VMs and containers that we create on demand. Um, we create some of these with, well, there's a tool called Docker to boot that takes a Docker file. And instead of running your container in Docker, it takes a Docker file, builds the image, and then from the image creates a bootable VM that doesn't have Docker. And so is, we only use the Docker file part of Dar Docker to describe a VM. We're kind of increasingly using uh, Kubernetes instead of this, but we use this for a long time. We also have this make Mac command, which uh, creates the VMware uh, Mac instances. For debugging, sometimes you run the tribots and they says, okay, it passes everywhere but OpenBSD or Dragonfly BSD, and then you think, you know, what is Dragonfly BSD and I don't have one of those. And um, so we have this tool called GoMote, and GoMote basically, it runs on your machine and it connects to the coordinator and it says, hey, give me a, give me a something. And it will either create you a something or give you a connection to a something, but they all have the standard um, buildlet interface. So you can say, create me a uh, OS X 10.11, whatever cat that was, and you say, gomote, give me a Windows. And then you can run commands like gomote push to like push your whole local go root file system or whatever to it and synchronize it. And then you can like run commands and it streams uh, standard out and standard there and the exit code back to you. So it's, it's not quite a shell, and I kind of want to make it a shell that's more SSH-y later, but for now it's better than nothing when you have to debug a system you don't have. Um, so eventually uh, you debug your problem on you know, whatever BSD, and it comes back and says, all right, Tribots are happy. We hit the little plus two button in Garrett, which enables the little submit button. You click the submit button. Now it's submitted on Garrett, which is, Garrett is not only a Git server, but it's also a code review system. But it is our master in terms of Git. And so then we have to sync it to GitHub. And that's another thing that the coordinator does. One of its little functions in the background is watching Garrett and seeing if new things are in Garrett and syncing it there. And then that's the GopherBot credentials it uses. So then GopherBot closes the thing. GopherBot is really like four or five programs that all are just called GopherBot. So you can't actually go find the code for it. Um, then we have another little program called BuildStats. Uh, the coordinator logs the timings of the actions of everything into uh, like data store and BigQuery and stuff. So then we could go run SQL and say, you know, give me the you know, 95th percentile build time of all Tribot rhymes that were successful in the last 30 days. And then we could look and say, you know, what is being slow and what's slowing down our Tribot results. So you can say like, oh, it's you know, the ARM machines and, and OpenBSD and stuff like that. So, We've been using that to drill down into exactly what specific tests are slow and try to like speed up the overall build. Uh, sometimes we screw up a build configuration, like we just put on MIPS the other day and we had set some uh, environment variables wrong. So we turned on the, the MIPS machines and we just got a whole column of red saying fail, 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 fail. Uh, so then we have a little command called retry builds that goes and clears things from the dashboard. You can match patterns, you can say get rid of this architecture, get rid of this column or this line or whatever. Um, we also have a tool called issue lock, which freezes old GitHub issues, because it's often the case that, um, I don't know where my slide for that was, but people get a bug from Go and they copy paste some things into Google and Google finds an ancient GitHub issue from like two years ago. And then they start commenting on this closed issue and no one replies to them because the GitHub issue is closed and we're not tracking it anymore. So that's kind of a sad uh, experience for users. So instead we, we have GopherBot lock the issue and say, add the label uh, frozen, due to age or something. So then at least they'll file a new bug and we can help them more. 
Um, oh, there's the picture of that. There you go for bot, frozen due to age. Um, in terms of documentation and releases, um, we have tip.golang.org and talks.golang.org. These actually are running a program that Andrew and I um, hacked up during a YouTube video live. And it's basically just an HTTP reverse proxy that keeps two uh, GoDocs running, or whatever program. And whenever it notices that the repo changed, it slurps it all down with Git, rebuilds it all, and waits for the server to start up. And when it started up, the reverse proxy changes what backend it runs to. And these are just two sub-processes under a reverse proxy. So we use that for um, tip.golang and talks.golang. There's also godoc.org, which um, is a thing. And I'm for, I've never touched this code, and I don't want to, because once I touch it at all, I'll be responsible for life. So I, I don't actually know who maintains it right now. Um, I think uh, Steve wants to touch it, and he's welcome to touch it. Um, <laughs> he's, he's shaking his head. OK, he's going to rescind all that. Um, there's also another tool we use for when making release called an X build come release. And basically, it's, it speaks the same Go mode interface, like give me a machine of all these types. And it basically runs the build, but then it also pushes some extra crap, like the MSI installers for Windows or the whatever the PKG file clicky clicky thing for uh, Mac is, and uh, makes those release artifacts. Um, and then we have another tool. It actually, as part of release after we've like we're happy with it. It uploads it to golang.org slash DL, which is a little web app, which you know shows you your downloads and shows you um, all these things, like the checksums and stuff. So that's a little web app. Uh, other miscellaneous tool that we kind of use at the end of a release is something called Update AC. This is only run inside Google because it has to talk to internal Google services, the, namely the uh, CLA, the Contributor License Agreement server, and say, like, for this given commit, in the Go repo with you know given email address, who owns the copyright on this code? Is it the individual or the, comp or the individual's company? And then we update the author's files and contributor's files. Um, we don't strictly really need to do that, but it's nice to like have a list to say who the authors are and who the contributors are if for people who don't like, I guess, look at the Git history. Um, in terms of uh, meetings and other process, we have kind of regular proposal review meetings where we sit down and kind of force ourselves to look at all the pending uh, proposals, um, which seem to come in quite a bit lately. Um, before we had this, everyone kind of just hoped somebody else would close the proposals, and it never happened. So now we kind of force ourselves to get into a room. And then we also, at the end of during the freezes, we have kind of weekly or biweekly uh, uh, like Go18 release meetings. And we just go over the open bug list from that dev app I showed earlier and just make sure that everyone understands like what who owns what and if things are mysterious or not. But um, that's kind of an overview of uh, the tools we use the most. I'm sure there's ones I forgot. But anyway, that's all. Thanks. Thank